Espoir. C'est dramatique, il faut que ça s'arrête. Il président et le lauréat du prix Sakharov 2018, Oleg Sensov. Grazie. Ho il piacere di dare Ho il piacere di dare il benvenuto Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, it's a great honor for me to welcome Mr. Oleg Sensov, a Ukrainian filmmaker and writer to who was released last year. It's a great pleasure to have him with us today. This will give us a chance to give him the 2080 Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought. Beforehand, however, I would like to ask all of you to watch a very brief film about Oleg Sensov. I don't want to look back at the past. I want to look at the present and into the future. The problem now is our prisoners who are still behind bars. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honour for me on behalf of the European Parliament to extend a warm welcome to Oleg Sensov, winner of the Sakharov Prize in 2018. He was released back in, Sem in September together with another 35 prisoners as part of a prisoner swap. Oleg came back to Ukraine after spending five years in prison as part of a 20-year prison sentence based on accusations of terrorism a sentence handed down by a Russian court for having criticised the illegal op occupation of his home country, Crimea. So last year, he was still in prison in Siberia. During the ceremony, many of you remember the empty seat we had here in the chamber. That empty seat, which should have been for him, was a symbol of his fight for democracy, but also of the hole, the vacuum left in society by all these people who were punished for saying the truth an empty hole, an empty space in the daily lives of people, families, communities and democratic life in the world. So following the political trial which he was subjected to in Russia, Sentsov said, I don't know what value our personal convictions could have if we're not willing to suffer or indeed to give our lives for them. I was very much struck by those words. Indeed, everybody who heard them was very moved by them. It's absolutely true that courage is not just a value of the heart, it's also part of our spirit. And this has been a light motive in your work from the very outset, and you paid the highest price for that. However, why should anybody pay the price of their freedom? So many people defending human rights are forced to fear for their lives. They're afraid. They can't see their families, their friends, because they refuse to remain silent or to back down in the face of violations of human rights. Journalists, artists, artists are increasingly be being targeted because they're 
saying what they think. Oleg Sentsov has been released, but many others, in, including bloggers, journalists such as Aziev, are still in prison in eastern Ukraine. And I think all of you would join with me in calling for their release. The same words would apply to other former winners of the Sakharov Prize who are still in prison. Nezla Sotudeh, for example, Iranian, winner of the prize in 2012. After being released some time ago, this year our prize winner was arrested once again this year and condemned to 38 years in prison. The Damas de Blanca, the Cuban women's movement who received the prize in 2005. Many of the members of that movement are still subject to intimidation by the authorities. Radsnev Saitude, the Syrian winner of the prize in 2011, and members of that group disappeared with no trace. None of us would want to forget any of these people. The European Union is based on values such as democracy and human rights. When human rights are cast into doubt, when democracy is undermined, that hollows out our rule of law. And at such times, the bravest members of our society are sorely needed. Trade unionists, bloggers, journalists, media operatives, artists, publishers, all of these people who strive to give a voice to those whose voice has been silenced. Democracy cannot exist without a lively and diverse civil society. This is why we have to do everything in we can to protect it. Mr. Sensov, I would like to create, pay tribute to your courage, to your determination, to your sense of honour. It's a great privilege for me to be able to extend this award to you on behalf of all the members of the European Parliament. It's my honour now to ask you to speak, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Andrei Sakharov, Nelson Mandela, Václav Havel. I would never have imagined that one day my name will be mentioned together with theirs. It's a huge honor and also a huge responsibility. Thank you for this. I accept and take this prize, not as a personal honor, but as a prize to all Ukrainian political prisoners that have ever been in Russian prisons and a prize in honor of all Ukrainian political prisoners who are still there, all our prisoners who are in Donbass in the hands of the separatists, all our activists who continue fighting for our country, as an honor for all our military men and women who fight for our independence, and some of them have even given our, their lives for our independence. Currently, a lot is being said and talked about negotiations and a possible peace with Russia. I don't trust Mr. Putin, and I call upon you not to trust him either. Russia and Putin will absolutely, definitely cheat you. They don't wish for peace in Donbass or Ukraine. They want to see Ukraine on its knees. They do not want to apply European lawful policy. They would like to rule with their own forceful methods. We won't allow this. We'll fight for our freedom and we'll fight to the end. You have many internal discussions and differences here in, in the EU. You have conflicts, you have different views on, to, on how to develop, how to reform yourselves, how to go forward. As we say in Russian, 
we wish we had your problems. Our problems are much more complex and severe. Our ancient, corrupt system in the country that has not been changed. We're also subject to military aggression. Each week, our military men and women are dying. It's a different level of problems. But given all your internal challenges, the EU is developing. I think it's a great institution, and you're a good example to all of us. Because there is a country who is the greatest Euro optimist today in the world. It's called Ukraine. For us, there is no other development path and no other way out. For us, this is a question of survival as a nation. So every time when any of you ponders as to how to be friendly and um, with uh, Mr. Putin over our heads, please remember thousands of those who have fallen in Ukraine. Please remember hundreds of our young men who are still languishing behind bars that might be subject to torture right now as I speak. Please remember those Russian Tatars who could be arrested right now at this moment. Their houses may be searched, families, children may lose fathers, brothers. Please remember those young men who are right now at this moment in their military fatigues with this kind of sign on their sleeve are in the trenches risking their lives for our freedom and also for your freedom. Please don't forget them. Thank you. Long live Ukraine.